Good evening, how's everybody doing? Welcome to What The Flash. <laughs> I'm super excited. You guys know that I love speed lights. I love lighting in general. It doesn't matter if it's a speed light, a strobe, a reflector, the sun. I just like light. I chase light like a dog with a bone. I'm a seeker of light, born seeker of light. So I'm here to share with you the brand new Canon flagship speed light. I've been monkeying around, playing with this, testing it, you know, for the past 30 days, putting it through their paces, really hitting it hard. And, you know, I have to say, I'm super impressed with what Canon has done with this. So let's jump right into it. Hey, Bob. Oh, Dawn's shouting out. Yes, Dawn. You have a feedback. I have a face. feedback. Your Facebook is playing. Okay, let me turn that. There we go. The other computer so I could see. Um, so I thought I could go through, share the speed light with you guys, pop some questions into the feed. I'm happy to answer them now and or later. Give me a thumbs up. Let me know, is the audio okay? Sometimes when I reset this, it goes a bit loud and I get a little excited. Uh, audio is a good key. Um, my thought process is we'll jump into the speed light. It's compatibility. I have a couple 600s, a 600 EXRT2 and a 600 EXRT version one, and we'll show the compatibility. I've also, really, the best way to judge it is to make a print, and these were all created using the EL1s. Um, if you didn't see the video yet that we produced with Canon, check that out. I will drop a link in there. Really proud of that. And the team at Express Video, and Eric, the editor, um, Charlie, videographer, Becca, they were amazing. Diego, he was our first assistant on everything and he shot some video. Shout out to Diego as well. All good, I will tag them in the feed. And thank you also to my wife Dawn Davis who puts up with me while I'm constantly flashing her and testing these lights out around the house. So let's jump right into it. As you can see, the case is back to a vertical format, which I enjoy a whole lot more than the 600 XRT, which was kind of a square case. It is taller because there is a bigger flash unit inside. So let's jump right into it, talk about the larger flash head. It is larger in diameter. There is a new um, xenon flash tube in there dual modeling lights for tungsten and daylight. And yes, you can blend between the two. And I did do a test side by side. The quality of light from the larger head itself, bare head to bare head, photographing them on the wall. It's buttery smooth, no hot spots, nice fall off. It's a larger diameter of light. Um, so it's right up there with the quality of light, bare head to bare head as I would say, a Profoto A1. Another cool feature, which we've been dying for, is getting away from AA batteries. While this is an LPEL, extra large, extra long, whatever you want to call it, it does use the same battery charger as the LPE6. So that's great. But what this does is it gives us huge improvement in recycle time. There is also a built-in fan um, and I've pushed these things pretty hard. I've had the fan active, but I've never really heard it or noticed it. But definitely for consecutive frame to frame to frame photographs, the EL1 is a super performer and it keeps right up. Um, and it does work with any of the Canon cameras that has a hot shoe. So it doesn't necessarily have to be for the EOS R. It works equally as well on the 1DX 1DX Mark III, all those sets of things. So let me just put this, uh, just to give you an idea, we're in manual mode, and I'm gonna put this into 400 ISO, and we're gonna be 5.6 aperture, just to give you an idea of the recycle time, right? Let me make sure I'm in consecutive frames. So there we go, right? So this is low speed continuous on the, um, EOS R5, let's go to high speed continuous. There you go, right? There's a custom function feature, which I love. If I double tap the shutter button, it gives me the modeling light, 
which for mirrorless is a great feature as a focus assist beam. And yes, we can go into the menus, right? I'll go into the menus here and I'll show you the menus in a second. And we can dial the brightness of the lamp down or up, or we could go all tungsten, all daylight. I've been really enjoying a blend of both right in the middle. It's not too cool. It's not too warm. And then we could dial that down. So if you're in a dark environment, it's not so uh, obtruse in blinding people in their, in their eyes. And then it's just a quick double tap on or double tap off. Although I have to say with the mirrorless cameras, I've not really had an issue with low light focus. So it's been spot on. Another amazing feature with the EL1 is its ability to send signals to all of our other previous flashes, both in RT and optical. It's nice that Canon kept optical around for people that have older legacy speed lights. It will work. I myself will never go back to optical again because I'm free to put these lights wherever I want. And that's been huge. Um, I'm going to share with you this print that just came out of the printer. Right? And these are printed on, on Hannah Mule Photo Rag Pearl. Stunning, stunning, stunning paper. And this photograph is captured with the 1DX Mark III at 6400 ISO, aperture 2.8, with one speed light off camera illuminating our subjects, Sir and Erica. And the reason I'm showing this is because it's ultra low flash output. The flash output in this image is actually one 8,190 second flash power. So it's so low of a blink of light that nobody notices it. So this could be really useful in close-up situations or oftentimes if you're trying to capture a candlelit photograph and then you want that flash to just put the highlight in the eyes. It's not an overpowering flash. And what's really cool, as I was saying before, is the EL1 can send that information to an off-camera RT 600, be it a 600 EX2 or a 600 EX RT, because it is the sender unit. So I will come in here, and you can see the menus. Give that a tick to focus. There you go. Really bright, easy to read, and you can adjust the text size to be larger. I have it larger, so I can actually read this without glasses because my glasses are for reading. I don't normally wear them for shooting, so I could see that. And what's nice is we've gotten away from the old terminology, master slave. Thank you, Canon. And we have gone to, come on, focus up, sender and receiver, right? Which is awesome. So in sender mode, I can activate group and we could go into any particular group. And it's really easy to drive these features with the joystick or the command dial that's here. And then once you're there, you could go down to power and you could easily adjust the power, right? Up, down, low. So this is in group C and I'm gonna take this flash output as you can see, it goes below 1 1 28th. There we go. This way. Yep. And it will go all the way down to 1 8192nd power, which is just a kiss of light. So I have the 600 EXRTs set up over here. So let me come to this camera and we can uh, spin it around a little bit, maybe get a bit of a wide shot. So here is a 600EX2. And the way I've been going with my off-camera flash is if I really want improved recycle time is by having a high voltage battery pack. Now, I can't say enough about PowerX batteries. These are the PowerX Pro 2700 milliamp rechargeable batteries. They are just the bomb for improved flash recycle time. But if you really want that to jump up to near instantaneous, these are the Lumidine Megacycler batteries. 
let me just take this guy off. This has been about the best high voltage battery that I have found for quick recycle time. Now you gotta be careful with these, especially with your older flashes. You will overheat them because it'll just drive those speed lights for continuous flash firing. So what I do, I found if I put these off camera at about an eighth or a sixteenth power with that mega recycler and get my ISO for my triangle of light right around 1600, maybe 2000, I could get those consecutive frame fires, right? So bring in the EL1. I'm going to go to, this is in group B and I'm in manual mode. So I'm going to bring that flash output really low. And I'm going to bring this bad boy up so you could see it. And I'm going to point it right in the lens. Hopefully you could see it. And for a few frames, we're going to have the sender unit active. And what I found is a great feature, even doing this in the old menu structure, is if I don't want light to be contributing from my sender unit, I just go to group A and I deactivate it on the current EL1 and the old 600s versus toggling down to menu three, turning off the speed light, then toggling back to menu one so I could get to my groups and adjust my flash power output. So for the next few frames, all I'm doing is sending instructions to B and C is off. So you could see this is barely a blink of light, right? Can you guys see that? Look at this. I mean, it's really, really low flash output. Now you gotta remember with that ultra low flash output, flash duration, it increases its ability to stop motion. So that photograph that I shared earlier of um, the water droplet, I think that was at 1512 or 1024 power, but I was at 2000 ISO in order to get the aperture value that I wanted to have. Right? So it's just the amount of uh, flexibility and creativity you could go now is incredible. So just to share with you, this is in B. I'm going to take the B just to show with a mega cycler battery will do. And I'm going to go back down to my power and we're going to bring it back up to an eighth power. So that's kind of like where these guys live when they're off camera. Right? So then as I'm photographing, you could see it kind of keeps up. Now, in no way is it going to keep up with the EL1. So if I go to the EL1 and I'm going to turn the flash head on in manual mode, right? And we're going to set it, let's see, let's set it at 1 8th power. And we'll just deactivate Group B, I'll go to my menu, group B, and I could turn it off. And it's so much easier to get to the groups and do that. But you could see the recycle time on this EL1, oh my God, right? It's continuous. It's insane. I did a uh, birthday party on a sailboat, and I was using the 1DX Mark III. I had three EL1s at the time, but they had to go back, you know, because there's only a handful of them around. And these are... Um, non-production model units. So it's just, just outstanding, outstanding. So let me pop over here and check the feed and see if anybody has any questions. I want you to fire away and we'll go from there. Here, I'll keep uh, this one on. Let me turn the camera because I could check this other computer for the questions. There we go, good. Now I'm running this camera here that you're looking at is the EOS R with the 28 to 70 f2 lens. This is the R5. And then my um, camera number one here is a 5D Mark IV. All right, so let's come back over here. Just check this out, check for any questions. Thanks, Bob Ray. He's got the pipes. Tune in to Bob Ray. He's got uh, amazing pipes and a good storyteller. 
So let's just check. Any questions? Hi, Bob. Finally, Canon with a rechargeable battery. Yes, Noel, a rechargeable battery built in and the insane recycle time. Michael Walker, how would you compare this to a Profoto A1? So good question. I, Profotos are great. I do have A1s. I have uh, A1s to go along with at times when I need a strobe. Some events that I'm working, there's a red carpet. So I use the B1s off camera and I, I have developed a way to cobble it together with the Canon system. But you know, whenever you start cobbling things together and have an interpreter in there, there's room for error and miscommunication. So that's why I got the A1 for those red carpet situations. But now with the uh, EL1 and the Westcott FJ400, which speaks Canon RT, and the EL1 will keep up with the insane recycle time of the FJ400 strobes, I'm going all Canon all the way. The reason being is this, nobody, nobody, let me switch to this, I gotta say this, nobody has a better interface and usability and customizability than Canon. And here's what I'm saying, is Profoto does not give you the ability to have independent groups, right? So I can have, so the way the Profoto A1 works, let's just talk about it, right? Your first three groups, A, B, and C, are either all TTL or all manual. While you can access group D to turn it on and off and change its power, it's forever and always in manual mode. Now the A1 as a sender unit whoop, will, let's get that camera back up where you found it, just went to sleep. All right, here we go. It will, it will, lost my train of thought. Here we go. I do have an AC power for this thing. I should have plugged in. Okay, as I was saying, it will fire groups D, E, and F. You can't access them to do anything. So you're stuck. If they were at a half power and you need them to be at a different power range, you have to walk up and touch them. With Canon, and now the combination of the FJ400, I could go to any group, turn them on, off, put them in any mode at any point in time, right? So that's a huge advantage for me because I'm constantly changing my lights, especially for the triangle of light. When we're at an event and I'm doing the triangle of light, I have two lights at the front of the room, one at the back of the room. At any given moment, I could change any one of those groups on, off, manual mode, TTL, make one the main, one the fill. It's basically three-point portrait lighting extrapolated out to fit a room. Let me um, pull up some photographs from an event, and I'll get those. Let's go to... Let's see, get a uh, recent wedding here, and I'll show you what I mean. I could have had this up and ready, but I just wanted to dive right into this. Oh, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I should have had this up. Now I gotta pull it up. Okay. I should yell down the dawn. Here we go. Here's the wedding. Pulling it up. And one second. We're gonna go. So while this was in a brightly lit space, come over here and we're gonna pull in photo mechanic. This is a brightly lit space, meaning it has um, windows around. So we can get daylight coming in. The light was overhead, so it starts creating shadows and, and um, deep eye sockets, and you don't have that specularity in people's eyes. With the triangle of light, at any given moment in time, I could make any light the main. So while they're over by the bar, 
and I practice this and I set up my lights the same all the time, I could tell my C group light, hey, I want you to be the main, which is coming from across the room, but still giving me the highlights in their eyes. This is no on-camera flash. And you could see all the daylight in the background here, right? So it's, it's just a fantastic tool. And this was not a uh, wedding that was photographed with the EL1. I did do one large event with the EL1s. It's a private event. I could only share a couple of the photographs with you. Um, let me get that really quick. And I'll share with you how well it performed. They are right here. Oh, no, wrong one. Pulling it up. So again, if you have any questions, drop them in the feed. I'm uh, excited to share this with you guys. Here we go. Oh, that's not the finished files. I can't show the ones that aren't finished. I think this is already up. It is. Bear with me one second here. Here we go. Finished photographs. All right. So this is the EL1s. And again, given situation, here is a space that is um, an all glass, it's not even fair to call this thing a tent, but we'll call it a tent, all glass a tent. Elegant, beautiful, um, micro event, you know, not a lot of people there. But you see all the specularity and the catch lights in this area, right, in here? That is all from the triangle of light. Uh, it's showing both, so let's photo mechanic, cool. So you can see this, good. Good, good, good. All right, how about if I keep it there? That's it, keep it there. All right, so you can see the specularity in the glasses and in the space. That's the power of the triangle of light. So the EL1s were just outstanding because I did have some 600s off because I only had three EL1s. That's all there are right now because they're not in, they are in production, I should say. They are delivering in, I believe, February, and B&H is taking pre-orders on them. But I didn't have enough to fill up the room, meaning if I used three off-camera EL1s, then I wouldn't have one to be the sender unit. So what I did is I had one off-camera EL1, uh, one EL1 on each of my cameras, which was a 1DX Mark III and an EOS R5. Uh, again, I didn't miss a beat because of these guys. And then I had the Mega Cycler and the 600 EXRTs off camera with the Maha batteries. So everything was keeping up nicely. So let's go to a darker point in the event. So here you can see on this photograph, see the rim light on the side of his face, right? On both sides, you can see that. That's from the lights in the front of the room in groups. B and groups C, one eighth power. Now the light on his face is not from an on-camera flash. The reason being is you see all this atmosphere in the room? There was so much atmosphere in the room that my on-camera flash would light it up like headlights in the fog. So I turned off the on-camera flash and I used the D light in the back of the room with the flash head zoomed at 105 millimeters. Now I do use mag spheres off camera to distribute the light, but you could see the light that's illuminating his face. That's from the D light in the back of the room at a quarter power. Front lights at an eighth, back of the room, which was about 70 feet away, was quarter power. And that's the beauty of the triangle of light. Now here, this is at the front of the room. We have directionality coming in. Therefore, I'm making the EL1 in group B my main light, my on-camera flash is an EL1 in the center unit, group A, is just up bouncing in TTL minus two and a half stops. All right. Uh, how high are the lights, Anthony is asking. So Anthony, on my light stands, I have 10 foot light stands and they are up usually as high as they can be. So they're over the center pieces and they're going downward toward 
the guest and they all have a mag sphere on them. So the lights don't necessarily need to be pinpointed right at the center of the room. We get a nice spread of light. Keith White, hey Bob, they made the right choice to have you test these lights. Thanks so much, I appreciate it, Keith. Yeah, I am a speed lightaholic. Uh, let's keep going through a few of these. Here you can see again is another example. Let me get rid of me. So you could just see and appreciate this photograph. Um, there we go. So you could really see in this image the rim light effect from the speed lights in B and C. D light is completely off. So it's just the two front lights. It's the theatrical lighting in the space, but we're sculpting, we're shaping with light, right? And it's just amazing. And this is ISO 500. Right, because the theatrical lighting that was in there was bright enough to fill in the space and fill in the area and all the colors. It was roughly about 5,000 degrees Kelvin in there, so it was really hard to kind of balance against the house lights. You couldn't because of all the theatrical colors going on. But the white lights, you know, I did talk to the stage manager ahead of time, and they inform, informed me it was at 5,000 degrees Kelvin. So let's see, check some more questions here. Um, hey, Linda, John, how are you? I love your garage studio. That's where I will be. The flash head looks bigger too. Yeah, let's do that. Let me grab a 600 EXRT off camera here. And we can actually do a side-by-side -side comparison of the lights. And we will go to the cameras and we'll switch over to camera two, right? Yep, here we go. Uh, Make camera two active. Wake up, here we go, good. So hopefully you could see them side by side. Big difference, yes, the mag mod, mag rubber bands will fit. You do have to stretch them out. I keep my um, mag rubber bands on pop cans so that they sit, stay stretched out. But there is a big difference in the flash head, which makes for much improved quality of light made room for the new Xenon flash tube, made room for the modeling lights. Again, we could turn them on, right? Modeling lights, right? Um, there's a fan in here. While it does have a fan, it's still weather resistant. It has the same weather sealing as a one series, which is amazing because I have used the <laughs> 600s at a wedding in a microburst storm with a downpour that was incredible. And my one series cameras was the only camera in flashes that kept on working, right? There is a bigger difference. Physically, it's bigger. There's a whole lot more going on inside here. The battery is bigger. The actual interface is improved. It's kind of hard to see, but the window is bigger. The functionality is improved. Everything about it is improved. Another big factor that I really enjoy is a lot of times I want to bounce the light up when I'm in an environment and you just have to turn the head around to aim the head back. Now you don't have to because it goes back, boom. And I do love over any of the other speed lights on the market that can and kept the lock, right? With Profoto A1s, if you put any type of uh, modifier on here, it it drops, it spins, it does all kinds of crazy things. This locks. I appreciate that Canon also kept the PC sync in here because I never leave home without a radio backup. One of the old school pocket wizards or even the older uh, radio poppers because they're on 900 megahertz. And oftentimes I find myself in a venue where everything is at 2.4 gig and sometimes we run into a lot of RF so I always have a backup. And they also kept the auxiliary port for an external battery. Canon's external battery pack goes with this, and the uh, MegaCycler will make this instantaneous. There will be no waiting for recycle time. Currently, it's rated at um, 0 0.9 seconds for a full power one-to-one -one dump in recycle time. But rarely am I using that high of a power output level, right? Um, it still has the infrared focus assist beam to be used with DSLRs. And when you're not using the DSLRs, it will activate the modeling light. If you tell it to do that through the custom function or personal function features, 
on all of the mirrorless in our cameras. Um, let's take a look at this print again, right? Thank you, Carol Boss and Hannah Mule. I love Hannah Mule paper. This is the Hannah Mule Photo Rag Pearl. And this is Reggie, he's in the video. This is one of the featured images we did. And again, thank you to John Gresh. He was the inspiration. You know, I, I check out his studio feed all the time to creating the V-flat with the slats in it. So I find inspiration anywhere I can find it. And again, this is the ultra low flash output, which also gives it a short flash duration, which is amazing for stopping motion. So let me come over here and see what kind of questions we've got going on. Um, Keith White, do you ever use external flash controls on the camera? You know, to be honest, Keith, I never do because I find it cumbersome. I live in groups. Let's just say that. I live in groups. And the EL1 is fantastic. So if you got a bunch of 600s, don't worry about feeling that you have to replace them all to get 600s off camera. Remember, it sends the instructions for off camera second curtain sync. It sends the instructions for low flash duration. And I'll show you that here in a second. So you can get these guys as a sender. And it's really important for the recycle time for me, especially for weddings and events, someone coming down the aisle, this puppy does not miss a beat. Where, you know, these do. The recycle time just wasn't there. So that's a huge advantage. And since I live in groups, they've improved the ability with the joystick, if I hit the group, then all I do is use the command dial or push the joystick in and scroll through. So let's see if I can set this camera up and do that feature, kind of work it this way. So um, I can highlight any particular group. So when I push the joystick in, I could scroll around, I could highlight a group, and then in the group, I could just turn the command dial for on, off, ETTL, whatever I want it to be. Without having to push into the group, right? You could do it either way. So we could scroll through and do it this way as well, right? And I could drop it down to the power and then just turn the dial to change the power or push it in and now we could go right to the power and change it that way. So whatever way you're comfortable driving these things and sending the instructions out, you can do. And I, re I really have to say hats off to Canon as well. I don't know if it does it with any of the aftermarket speed lights, but it is a huge advantage with all of the Canon speed lights that in the newer cameras, the uh, 1DX Mark III, and all of the R mirrorless, that when you have eye face head detection active, and then you choose the setting, I believe it is by default, the R5, that ETTL is tied into the eye detection. So what it's doing is it's biasing the pre-flash ETTL to the face. So you get far more accurate ETTL exposures both on camera and off camera. It's outstanding. The engagement session that I showed live the other night, I couldn't say it, was all done with the EL1s. And the consistency rate is greatly improved. So it's like using flash exposure lock on every frame. And what flash exposure lock is, is you get that pre-flash that goes out, it reflects off the subject, so you gotta be careful where your active focus mark is. Is it on a dark tonality or is it on a face? If you hit your pre-flash and it's on a dark tone, well then the face is gonna be overexposed. But by tying it into a face head eye detection, it's going for the face. So if your subjects are wearing dark clothes in a dark tone environment, you get greater, like this for instance, one EL1 off camera, that is ETTL spot on, right? I didn't mess around with that. And that's a challenging situation for normal ETTL. This photograph of Reggie. Again, face detection is on. I used 
three 600 EXRTs behind to illuminate those slats that were cut into the backdrop at full power. Normally, ETTL might be fooled by that because of the bright backlight, but because this is tied into the face detection, I was using an EL1 in a rapid box beauty dish. Look at that face, it's perfectly exposed. So let me jump back over here and see what questions we've got. Any more questions coming in? Is it more powerful than the 600 EXRT? Sadly, Keith, it is not. Um, sure, we always want more power. But I'm at that point with a trade-off that more power would be nice for maybe larger light modifiers off camera or shooting lower ISOs. But I've never been concerned with low ISO. Um, let's pull this image up on the screen and I will share with you the photograph that was taken at um, ultra high ISO. So let me share the desktop. There we go. So this image is 6400 ISO. Now, if I went higher my ISO, 8,190 second flash power at aperture 2.8 was too bright, too much light. Remember, you're balancing with your ambient light. So let's zoom in, right? So let's zoom in 200%. There you go. Really? Really. This is 6400. So do we really need more flash output power? I don't know. We always want more power, but with the ability to shoot clean images at such high ISOs, I don't think the trade-off is worth it, meaning if you increase power, you're going to trade off recycle time, you're going to increase the battery, something's got to give in order to fit into the package. Here's um, a wider photograph with those same settings, 6400 ISO, aperture 2.8, one one sixtieth shutter speed. Again, your shutter speed is equal to the ambient light. So I was trying to keep these highlights in check with my shutter speed at that high as of an ISO at 2.8. And yes, these are in ETTL, right? Clean, 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 clean. So if you're using speed lights and lighting the environment, why do you really need to photograph at crazy high ISOs? Most all of my event work is done anywhere between 800 and 2000 ISO. That's it, using the triangle of light. Because I really don't need to go much more than that because I really want my photographs to um, complement the environment that was lit. Going back to this photograph, right? If I overpowered the scene, meaning my lights are dominant, we would wash out all the beautiful mood that the atmosphere and the theatrical lighting provided here. So I want to complement that light, right? Same thing here. Um, now, someone asked me online, you know, hey, knucklehead, why would you use a strobe during fireworks? Really, people? Really. Do you think the couple is lit from the fireworks? No. The speed light is lighting them, but it feels congruent. And that's my goal with my lighting is I want you to feel like my light is part of the scene. Like in movies, it's called lighting for the practical. You see the fireworks and you think, oh, the fireworks are rim lighting the couple. They're not, right? Because the fireworks are in the sky and there's so much darkness around the couple that they would be barely visible. They wouldn't sing like this image. Now this is, surprisingly, the R5 with the 15 to 35 with an EL1 as a sender unit. It's not active, not contributing any light. One EL1 off camera used the modeling light to uh, aim the light so we get it in the right spot. I used uh, ETTL at first, and it was ETTL minus two and a half on flash exposure compensation. It looked good. I used flash exposure memory. And what that is, is here, let's see if I could do it, is I'm going to, let's see, this, this speed light is in group B. Okay, so I'm going to put it on, because you got to do this on camera. I'm going to deactivate the on-camera flash, and we're just going to use 
this speed light to illuminate, let's say, the computer, right? Boom. So I took a shot in ETTL. See that? It's in ETTL, group B. So now I go to group B and I switch it to manual. And what does it tell me? It tells me that it was at 1 256 flash output power. That's exactly what I did with this fireworks. And then I even brought it down a little bit more. I believe in this image it was, you know, probably in that low light range. So we just needed that kiss of light, right? But that's what's really cool with flash exposure memory. So now I can move around, especially for detail photos and things like that, it's going to be consistent. Frame to frame to frame to frame consistency in manual mode. Love flash exposure memory. Oh, and let's get the uh, back of the, um, I thought it translated it to the back, but it, it's not. It's still saying 1 eighth. But I know it's not 1 eighth because on the back of this, it tells me it's 1 256. On other EL1s off camera, it tells you exactly what that flash output is. Let me take it again just to see if it registers. It's saying 1 eighth. Let me go here in B and just change it to 1 5 12 just to see if it goes lower. It does, but. I'm not getting that information on my 602EX2RT. All right, but anyways, that's why you would want to light a fireworks photograph. And, and another question that came in is, why the heck would you want to light a, a use flash at a concert? All right, this isn't a concert. This is a private event. He was totally backlit by this yellow spotlight on him. The rim light that's on his face that's illuminating, giving him some separation from that background is my EL1 in group C in TTL minus one. Because again, we're reading all this dark background. This is my first time out using him on a big event. I did have my 600s there just as a backup, just in case things went south, but everything worked. And therefore it gave me this nice separation on Tony Vincent. Tony Vincent is an amazing performer. Uh, you should check him out on Instagram, Tony Vincent. He uh, was on Broadway, he fronted, he sings Queen songs. I mean, he's just an amazing performer. So we, Don and I thoroughly enjoy whenever we get an opportunity to work with Tony Vincent. And another trick I do is in these situations, the lighting, meaning the atmosphere, the theatrical lighting is changing so fast, I stay in aperture priority, but I keep my exposure compensation at minus one or minus two or minus two thirds of a stop. What that's doing is it's keeping my shutter high because I want to underexpose that background light so that my flash can give us that separation and it works beautifully because I have been burned at these type of situations when the lighting director will hit them with a bright white spotlight and I'm dialed in manual and I'm blown. So I have high speed sync active so the shutter can freely go above 200th of a second should it need to. Let's take a look at some questions here. No more questions? No? All right. Well, sounds good. I appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. If you have any other questions, thoughts, concerns, 600 EXRT, get this EL1, EL1, Bad boy, bad to the bone, amazing, amazing tool. I will be using these for my sender units on, you know, minimum two to three, and then eventually work to off camera because what we could do then is get away from having this setup, meaning I got to have plenty of um, high voltage battery and plenty of AA batteries rechargeable to change out to go through an event on this setup. So this is a different battery, right? This is the Bolt, and it works good using the 2 into 1 plug with the 600 EXRT and with the Mahab uh, 2700 milliamp batteries. It works good, good recycle time, but not a performer like 
the Lumidine Megacycler. This guy you got to be careful with because you can and will overheat your speed lights. And if you're using like the older 580 series, you will burn out the flash tube. Um, but with the 600s, they shut off before that happens. But the EL1s, I have not tried with this yet, but they do have the port on there. So let's, let's give it a go, see what happens. Let me get an EL1. I'm gonna plug it in to the battery port. So we'll see where this goes. And we are gonna put this in manual. Turn off wireless. And we are gonna go full power. And we're gonna see what it does. So you saw it perform before, that was in TTL. Let's see what it does now. So this is full power. It's about one frame a second at full power, even with the battery. And the battery is pumping. So at full power, it seems to be, Canon rates it at 0.9 without a uh, battery pack, and I think 0.4 with the battery pack, or 0.5. So that felt about right. All right, sounds good. Let me check any questions, new questions come in here. Oh, Keith, yeah, good question. Um, can you use rear curtain sync with off-camera? Yes, you can. Finally, Canon has added. Let me pull it up here. We're going to go into wireless, active, sender. And you could see, here's our options. High-speed sync, first curtain sync, rear curtain sync. So we do have the option for second curtain sync. Oh, again, wake up, camera. There we go. All right. Um, yes, but it only works in manual mode because obviously if you had a pre-flash, which is required for ETTL, you would get a ghost of an image. So it only does second curtain, off-camera flash, manual mode. All right. Any other questions? No other questions? Sounds good. I uh, appreciate everybody turning in. Please give a thumbs up. Share this if you enjoyed it. Um, drop your questions in the feed, and I'll be sharing more throughout the week about photographs and the EL1 and how it performed. So it's been amazing. Thanks again for joining.